Welcome to Go Live TV, the future in your hands. The only multicultural IPTV station that brings communities together. Over 2.7 million people have already watched. Go Live TV, anytime, anywhere. TV. Uh, today we're going to do a little different what we do our show right now, Open Heaven. My name is Pastor Amber Silver and I'm here with uh, my father, Papa Amber. And also we have Brother Giuliano De Luca. Thank you. Thank Amen. you. Thank you. Amen. We, we thank God for this moment. Before we start um, today, I want us to pray in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this moment. We thank you that you've given us an opportunity to serve you, to meet your people, to bring Jesus' lives in their homes. We thank you for Go Life TV that you are using at this critical moment because you are surely coming, my Lord. And you want us to prepare the church for your imminent return. And so, Lord, we bless this platform you gave us that is giving us a voice in this land, is being given us a voice in the world to talk and communicate salvation to nations and to people, hope to those who are hopeless, healing to those who are sick, and the restoration to those who have lost everything. We give you all the glory, all the honor in Jesus' mighty name. And someone says, Amen. Amen, amen. Today, I am so honored to be here and uh, we'll be talking about uh, what is going on on the news, mostly what is happening to Israel, why we should pray for the nation of Israel, and I will also try to go into the Bible and the scripture and try to understand at what hour we are right now as a church, as the body of Christ. And before I go further, I want to say hello to Giuliano. How are you, sir? Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Silva. It's a pleasure to to be here. Amen. And in a good good theme, Amen. It's, now is the time to pray for Israel. Amen. Very nice of you. Definitely. I do have Papa Amber. I would say hello. How are you, hello, sir? Hello, Pastor Silva. Amen. Today we'll talk about Israel. So what do you have to say about Israel? Why should we pray about Israel? We will talk about Israel and the conflict in Israel. So, do you have anything to say about Israel? Yes, just to pray for Israel. Mm -hmm. yeah. In my family, we received a great man of God some time ago. His name is uh, Pastor Benjamin. He was from Israel. And that man was a man of God that the Lord sent to Africa. He was a prophetic man. And uh, I believe that um, he was in a hotel. God told him that somebody will pay for his hotel. How many days was he in the hotel again? Ten days? Uh, maybe one week. I think. The microphone. Maybe one week, I think. So he was about one week in the hotel. And the Lord told him that he's sending people to pay for the hotel. And so there was a little argument between him and the receptionist. And he was telling the receptionist, the Lord Adonai told me that he's sending people to pay for the hotel. And suddenly, my father was coming to that hotel with another friend of his. And curiously, they asked, what's the problem here? The man of God, his name is Pastor Benjamin. He said, Yahweh said that he's sending people here to pay for my hotel. And that's why I had my father here, because we have something to say about Israel. Because the Bible says, whoever will bless Israel, that means if you bless a Jew, you shall be blessed. He is the son of Abraham. And that covenant God added with Abraham and all the generation that follows. 
So to cut my long story short, my father who is sitting right here, you were able to pay the hotel yeah. for how many days, seven. microphone? For seven days. So he paid for seven days. There was another friend of his who also was there and he said they will receive the man of God in his house. And he, play, he, he came to our house in Sayo, I remember back then, right? Yes. He blessed us. He blessed the other man, friend to my father. Today, when he left, the blessing of God came. If we have to talk about people who feed the whole city, his friend is one of them. We saw a breakthrough in the business, in everything that we do, just because we blessed a man of God, but not any kind of man of God, but a Jew. And so right now, I'm using this example to show you that what the Bible says is true. If God said that you must pray for Israel, you must pray for the peace in Jerusalem, there's a blessing attached to it. Amen? So that's what I'm going to go into right now. I will ask our, uh, 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 our, uh, our technicians to just give us a little short video, maybe for 30 seconds, to show what is happening between Israel and Palestine the missiles that are coming into Israel. And then I'm going to open the Bible and we'll start talking about certain things here. Is that okay, Brother Julian? Yes, for sure. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So. Amen. Tonight in Tel Aviv, images that change everything in an escalation that has already spiraled so fast. Israel's missile defense systems lighting up the sky as they try to intercept incoming Hamas rockets. Israel is a system that is intercepting these missiles from the air. But some are falling into Israel. Did you see that? And so Israel is under fire right now. What do you have to say about this that is going on right now between Israel and Palestine? Oh, wow. Pastor Silva. Israel is the people choose by God, mm -hmm. right? So anybody who go against Israel, they need to fight the mighty God. Oh yes, right. So we know, I know, you know, Papa knows what is going to happen with all this attack against Israel. Like God opened the sea in front of Moses, and the people crossed. The sea on the dry land or yeah. dry, dry earth. So, I believe God will provide Israel, you know, a, a defense, Amen. whatever they need, Amen. because they're under God protection. Protection. That's true. And I'm going to open maybe one or two verses here, and that's going to help us to have a certain line that we'll follow. The first one is Matthew chapter 24. And uh, we are going to read from verse number 36. The Bible says, But of that day and the hour, no one knows. Now, he, this is Jesus talking to the disciple at the Mount Olive. This in, is uh -huh. in Israel. He said, Of the hour and the time, nobody knows. Not even the angel in heaven knows, but my father only is talking about his coming, the rapture of the church. Amen. Then he said on verse 37, but as the days of Noah were, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days of Noah, the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark and did not know until the flood came and took them all away. So also will the coming of the Son of Man be. Now, this is a verse I'm reading that has to do with the rapture of the church. Right now, as children of God... What we are waiting for is the rapture of the church. Because the Bible uh, is divided in many important events. Amen? And one of the events that the church that we represent is waiting for is the rapture of the church. And so the purpose of this meeting or this gathering we have right now is to see where is the rapture comparing to what is happening to Israel. Right now, does this war prophetic? Does it have to do with the coming of Jesus? And what should we, should we do as the church? Now, 
that will bring me to another verse that we will read in Ezekiel. I'll read Ezekiel chapter 38. The Bible says, if I can start from verse number 10, it says, this is what the sovereign Lord says. Oh, that thought will come into your mind and you will devise an evil scheme. Nation will have a scheme to destroy Israel. This is a prophecy that God spoke to Ezekiel. He said, nation will rise against Israel. He said, you will say, I will invade the land of unwelled villages. I will attack a peaceful and unsuspected people. And all of them living without walls and without gate and bars. I will plunder and loot and turn my hand against the resettled ruins and the people gathers from the nation rich in livestock. Today, there's no doubt the Jews are blessed. They are the ones, if you even see the, the security system that is intercepting missiles, it's only in Israel right now. They developed it, that technology. Because Hamas, which is the terrorist group in Palestine, with other organizations, are shooting missiles, anyhow, to Israel. But they have developed this system to intercept missiles from far away. Because the country is blessed. The country is rich. God gave them even wisdom in technology. That even the enemies of Israel are buying weapons in Israel. The best army in the world. It's not the United States. It's, it's Israel. Amen. So the Bible had already prophesied that. There are nations that will say, we will plow and we will loot, we will turn away against the resettle rings and the people gathers from that nation. That nation is rich in livestock and good, living at the center of their land. Center of their land. And this is what we call the war of Gog in the Bible. But let's go back to the story. I don't know if you have been watching the news. Do you, do you have any idea about what is happening? How this all happened? You can go ahead. Well, as far as I know, Israel has been in war for many, many years. Yes. Right? This is nothing new. But at this time, as you say, it's uh, the Bible is talking about this specific war. Mm -hmm. Right? So what is what has got me curious is... How come if the the Orthodoxes they're they're from Israel, right? Why they support the Palestinian? Now, you you do understand that even in Israel they have Arabs who live there. Mm -hmm. Yes. This issue started this particular issue we are talking about right now. It's an issue that started with the land. There is an area, I think it's called Sharjah or something like that, in, in Jerusalem, East Jerusalem. And in that specific area were house of Jews. When Jordan, the kingdom of Jordan, was controlling the land, they gave part of Israel to the Lebanon and part of Israel, that east of Jerusalem, to the Arabs. And 1946, I believe, when the nation of Israel was created, they, they, they still had their title, the ownership of the land. And so now, the Jews that had these houses, they went to the court to challenge and say, hey, we need our houses back from the Arabs that are in Jerusalem. You understand me? And the court ruled for the Jews and say if they will not give back those land or the houses they are living in, then they should begin to pay the rent. So these all things happened when the month of Ramadan was taking place. And so the last week of Ramadan, the court decided that since these people don't want to pay the rent, and they don't want to return the land to the Jews, then we will remove them by force. And so they sent the police in that neighborhood to kick them out. Mm -hmm. But because they're Arabs, 
and it fall during the month of Ramadan. Palestinians and people who are Muslims, the Muslim Brotherhood, that's what they call them, and different other organizations that are against Israel, start beating the Jews in Israel. And so it went on TikTok, on social media, okay. went viral. And then Jews now start to retaliate and fight. So they start fighting in Jerusalem. And when that whole thing started happening, it was during the month of Ramadan. For the Muslims, it became like an insult. So that's how Gaza and the Hamas, which is a terrorist group that has been there for years, start shooting rockets to Israel. And the Israel also start replicating. But the issue start escalating because people were dying here, people were dying there. Nobody want to just let their own people perish. Right. So they needed to defend their land. So Israel sent their helicopters to bombard the, 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 the it's called the, the Gaza Strip. And so the Hamas also, right now when I was watching the news, I see some Islamic countries like Turkey, um, like Iran, supporting this Hamas and sending their help to fight Israel. Because Iran want to delete Israel from the map. Other countries like Qatar are showing now support for Palestinians. Yemen is showing support to Palestine. Understand? And the Islamic Brotherhood are showing support to Palestine against one nation. And this is the nation in the book of Ezekiel chapter 38. Another nation that will bring support to these countries is Russia. So God had already revealed this to Ezekiel because this war is preparing the coming of a man of peace. This man of peace in the Bible is called the Antichrist. And like I always say, the Antichrist will not come and say, hey, I'm the Antichrist. No. The Bible says he will come as a man of peace. He is the only one who resolved the conflict between Israel and the Arab world. That's what we call the peace treaty between Israel and the Arabs. The Antichrist will do that. And I'm going to show you that in the Bible quickly here. It's, uh, if you read the book of Daniel, Daniel chapter 9, verse 27. Amen? Amen. I'm going to use my Bible here so it can help all of us. Amen. Daniel chapter 9. Can I have a little bit more of a yes. sound here? Yes. <clears throat> While I'm looking for the verse, aren't Amen. you finding this amazing? The explanation. And can true. you imagine how this small issue of land is, is becoming like a, a world war. It's becoming like nations were waiting just for an opportunity mm -hmm. to begin to fight Israel. What do you think about this? Let me grab well, this verse for you. First, I would like to, to ask a question. Why Israel and not other countries, right? Well, so, good question. Yeah. Good question. Uh, before I ans answer yeah, sure. your question, let me show you something here. Daniel, the book of Daniel, chapter 9. Daniel, chapter 9. If you read on verse number 27, he's talking about the Antichrist. He said uh, on verse 27, Then he shall confirm a covenant with many, many nations for one week. But in the middle of the week, he shall bring an end to sacrifice and offering. And on the wing of abomination shall be one who make desolate, even until the consummation, which is determined, is poured out on desolate. The Bible says that this man is called the man of lawlessness, with pampas word. If you even go behind there, you will see him in Daniel chapter, uh, 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 chapter 7. He is insulting God. He's insulting Jesus. He is the only one who will have a covenant with this nation to bring peace. And it will be a false peace. And that is how everybody will look at him and say, we want this one to be the leader of the world. Because he's a man of peace. He's able to calm the conflict of Israel and the Arab world. 
Now, let me go back to your question. Why Israel? Very, very important question. You have to understand that Israel is the spiritual calendar. Not only for Christians, but for the Jews. And Jerusalem is the heart of the prophecy. There's war in Congo. I grew up in Congo. We had different wars in 1996. What is happening to Israel? We were living it live. I saw how rockets are flying. They kill people before me. But Congo is not prophetic like Israel. Israel is prophetic. Everything that has to do with Israel has to do with God in the realm of the spirit and has to do also with the devil because you can see that the devil is himself is manipulating this issue of rent and land so that a nation can attack Israel. But when you read Ezekiel chapter 38, the Bible says that Jesus will not allow it. God will fight for his people. So in the realm of the spirit, Israel is prophetic. So if anything happened to Israel, God has to do something about it. If you bless Israel, he said, if you bless this nation, I will bless you. If you curse Israel, then I will curse you. That means God is saying the issue of Israel is my business. It's a chosen, it's prophetic. Why Israel? Because Israel is a prophetic nation. You understand? Because... They, 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 I was listening to some other men of God and someone asked the same questions. If you look at the story of Israel, you have read in the Bible about the Babylonian. Where are the Babylonians today? They don't exist. You, you, the enemy of Israel in the Bible, like the Philistine in the time of David and Goliath, today they don't exist. <laughs> uh, the Moabite, where are they today? They don't exist. They the, 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 the different nations that were in the old time, they don't exist. But after 2,000 years, Israel exists. And even though Israel was scattered, some were killed by the German with the crazy man, who was his name again, of Germany, uh, Hitler. He wanted to exterminate Jews, 7 million. He, he, the, the people from the, the, the Pologne, they, they, they took their share. The, the Cisjordani took their places. The Palestinian, different Arab country wanted this country to die. But suddenly, like a miracle, 1946, a nation was born. And the Hebrew language did not disappear. That itself is a miracle. It is a prophetic thing that God himself protected over the years. After 2,000 years, God came and placed them to the promised land. And today we have a very strong nation of Israel. You understand? So why Israel? Because Israel is in the agenda of God. It's like the clock of God in the realm of the spirit. When other nations disappeared, Israel will never disappear. That's why God is saying, pray for peace in Jerusalem. Because when you pray for peace in Jerusalem, it's actually for the peace of the earth. When Jerusalem, like this morning, I was watching the news, and uh, in Jerusalem, especially at this area I was talking about, the East Jerusalem area, there is what they call the Aqsa Mosque. It's like the third wonder of Muslims. So Muslims meet there to pray Allah. But there is also the prayer mount that is at the same location where that location, the temple of Solomon was built there. It is a very holy place for the Judaism, even for Christians. And so this morning I saw Rocket coming from uh, the st uh, strip of Gaza from the Palestinian and bombarding that area. It's basically showing you that the time we are in are very bad. And Jesus of Nazareth is coming. He said, what concerns the time and the hour, no one knows. But we do see signs. When something like this is happening in Israel, it is not just another war. 
because it's, a, it's been happening for centuries. But this is prophetic. I will show you certain things here in the Bible. Let us read Ezekiel 38. It said, Now the word of God came to me, saying, Son of man, set your face against Gog. When the Bible is talking about Gog, it's talking about Russia. Amen? It said, And of the land of Magog and the prince of Rosh, Meshech, Tubal, which is Turkey today, and prophesy against him. It said, and say, thus says the Lord of God, Behold, I'm against you, O Gog, the prince of Rosh. This is Russia. Wow, God is amazing. Meshech and Tubal, which is the actual Turkey today. And prophesy against them. And say, thus says the Lord God, Behold, I'm against you, O Gog, the prince of Rosh, Meshech and Tubal. I will turn you around. Put hooks on your jaws. Now, you have to understand that Ezekiel did not know about the technology today. The rockets and all kinds of missiles. So he's speaking in a language that he understands. And he's saying, I will turn you around, put hooks into your jaws and lead you out with all your army. He's talking about what we are experiencing right now. Horses and horsemen and speedingly cloth and great company with bucklers and shield. All of them handling sword. Now, here on verse 5, he talks about nations that will stand against Israel, but will join with the Palestine. He said Persia, which is Syria today. Amen? Ethiopia, Libya, Muslims country. With them, all of them with shield and helmet. Gomer and all his troop, the house of Togamar from the far north of the troops, Many people are with you. Prepare yourself and be ready, you and all your companies that are gathering about you, and be glad for them. After many days, you will be visited. In the later years, you will come into the land of those brought back. The land of those brought back is Israel. Because Israel was scattered somewhere, being killed by Hitler, somewhere. Uh, in Pologne, somewhere, even in Africa, there were some Jews in Africa. The, the, the Lord already prophesied about it. He said, after many days you will be visited. And in the latter days you will come into the land of those brought back from the sword. Because they were being slaughtered by Hitler. And gather from many people on the mountain of Israel, which had long been desolate. They were brought out of the nations, and now all of them dwell safely. Isn't that the word of God so powerful? Yes. That yes. God can control the future before even we see the future. This was written years and years back. But we are seeing it now on TV taking place on our own eyes. What's my message this afternoon? We need to pray for Israel. We need to pray for that nation. Forget about the politics because not everything that the politicians are doing in Israel are right. But our duty as children of God is to stand with what the Bible is telling us to do. It's a bless Amen. Amen. this nation. I love how you pray sometimes in Hebrew. Why do you pray in Hebrew? You feel like there's something unique with that prayer. Can you pray in Hebrew a little bit like you usually do it? Adonai, something like that. There is something powerful that God wants us to know. This is actually some, it's a verse in the Bible. Yes. They say, um, to God raise his, uh, the sun before you, your face. Yeah. So in Hebrew is, Yes. 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 Praise God. Praise God. Amen. So in your prayer, I heard something about the peace. Yes. The shalom. Shalom. We have to pray for the peace for this land. So many nations do not want this nation of God to be on the map. Amen. And in the reality is, is they don't want Christians. <laughs> That's the truth. The Christians is the last barrel we, they need to cross. Exactly. 
Because God has made Christians today very powerful. Yes. Whether we want it or not, Jesus, the name of Jesus, Amen. is the most powerful name anywhere you go. Amen. Even people in Islam, they call him Isa bin Adam. Amen. Jesus, eh? Isa bin Maria, something. Isa, son of Maria. They call him a prophet. They call him all these names. They know that the name of Jesus is the Amen. most powerful name Amen. that we can ever have on earth, under the earth, even in heaven. Amen. And that the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that he's the Lord. Amen. Amen. So as Christian, if you are a child of God, understand that the name of Jesus is on the line here. It is not about Palestine or they are, they are, they are, they are Muslim radical Muslims who are part of this terror, terrorist group, the jihadists. Can I say something? Yes, Pastor sir. Um, what, is very, what it is very important right now to realize is a time to redeem. It's a time to repent. Oh, yes. I'm talking to pastors. Pastors being a leader for many, many years. Some being done the job well, and some being cheating very well. But it is time to repent. Jesus is coming back. Oh, yes. The Bible is not lying. The Bible tells us all the truth that's happened today. Yes. So, I want to take this opportunity on your show. Yes, sir. To let you know, many pastors is going to come back to Jesus. Pastor who was in a church, who is in the church, preaching the word of God. But inside, they're all confused. Time to stop lying. Time to stop manipulate people and give yourself to the mighty Jesus. Praise to God that we still have some pastor who really cares about the sheep. Ask the Holy Spirit to take over your house, your heart, to take over your mind. Because Jesus is coming back. The war in Israel is a warning to the world. Oh, yes. This is not any word. Word. I mean, war. This is a warning to the world. Yes. If today you're watching this show with the Pastor Silver Amber, it's nothing wrong. To kneel down before God and say, I repent. I repent for yesterday being lie. I repent to lie today. I repent to cheating my wife or cheating my husband. I repent to, 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 to manipulate the church. Repent. Because if you not repent, nothing good for you out there besides Jesus Christ. Amen, Amen Pastor. And I will finish this uh, important uh, show, which is bringing so many lives to Christ. With Revelation chapter 3, verse 5, the Bible says, The one who conquers will be clothed, though in a white garment, and I will never blot his name out of the book of life. I'll confess his name before my father and before his angel. I always say... Going to heaven is not difficult. Going to heaven is follow the Bible. Follow what the Lord is saying. And what he's saying here is for you just to tell him, Lord, forgive me. Forgive my sins, but write my name in the book of life. Amen. Did you see? He said, if your name is in the book of life, he said, I will not remove it. He said, I will, I will never blot his name out of the book of life. God is faithful. And he said, I will confess his name before my father and before his angel. I want to give you an opportunity to receive Jesus. Amen. Nothing in this world is the same like it used to be. 
we went from the pandemic, the coronavirus, and we were told about social distancing. We were told about wearing masks. Today we are told about the vaccine. But if you watch every step of everything happening, there's no solution. The solution is hidden in Jesus. Amen. Only Jesus can Amen. give you true peace. Guarantee. True healing. Amen. True restoration. Amen. And above all, only Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Amen. And there is a place he said he went to prepare for us. He said, where I will be, you will also be. Jesus made a call for us to prepare because he needs us where he is. And one way to get to where he is, is to begin by confessing, receiving him as, as your Lord and Savior, repenting from your sins, turn from the wicked ways, and then tell him, Lord, write my name in the book of life. He said, I will never remove your name in that book anymore. Amen. Pray with me in your houses or wherever you are. Say, Master Jesus, today I repent from my sins. I repent from lies. I repent from manipulations. I repent, Lord, from everything I've done wrong before you. Today, I ask you to come into my life. Come again and restore me. Come again and put your mark on me. Come again and write your name in, the, in my name in your book of life. I decree with my mouth what I believe in my heart that you died and rose again for my justification. I'm born again in Jesus' name. Someone say amen. amen. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. If you did that prayer, you know that you are already born again and that the Lord has forgiven your sins. And I want to take this opportunity because we are not just doing a show. The glory of God is here and is here to break the yokes. It doesn't matter what is that area of your life that is going through trouble. God has sent us here with the purpose of decreeing the word that set free. He said, and I've sent forth my word and my word healed them. If you are sick, if you are going to trouble, suicidal, you are desperate, hopeless, you are under depression... We are going to, de to agree, as we sit, Brother Giuliano, myself, yeah. and Papa Amber, we are going to accept and decree a healing Amen. upon your body. Yes. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I will Amen. ask Amen. Papa Amber to pray. Amen. And we will be Praise praying slowly. But we are God. putting ourselves in agreement for your healing. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Oh, Rabbi Let us pray. Baba, Katika China, one of you, Christ. Let's agree to this healing. In the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes. Thank you, Lord, Thank you. for the healing. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Baba, Thank you. Yes, Lord. Thank you. 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 Asante kutuokoa, asante kutufia msalabani. Thank you for dying on the cross. Umezema wana ulikufa msalabani ili kwa kupigwa kwa kosisi tupate kupona. Unastahili sifa yesu, unastahili kwa budiwa na kusujudiwa. Diyo mana tunashuka baba ili wopate kuinuka. Wiluliwe baba, ushangiliwe. Wala kuna mungu mwingine kama na wewe. Unaenea kwetu, unatosha. Unastahili baba. Asante kujua hata esabu ya nyele zetu. Asante kutujua kwa majina yetu. Asante kwa njika majina yetu kwenye kitabu cha uzima. Unatosha, unaenea baba. Tunasema asante kwa upunyaji wako. Asante kwa neno lako. Asante kwa mtumishu wako baba. Asante kwa welcome Holy Spirit ministry. Unastahili sifa yetu. You receive all the glory forever and ever. There's none like you. Thank you. In Jesus' name.
Amen. Oh, yeah. Say with me, I am. I am. I am. Like a tree. Like, like a tree. tree. Planted to the riverside. Planted, Planted to the riverside. My leaf shall not wither. My leaf shall not wither. But I'll produce in my season. But I'll produce in my season. This is my season. This is my season. And I must produce. And I must produce. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Whatever I do shall succeed. Whatever I do shall succeed. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Whatever I touch shall prosper. Whatever I touch shall prosper. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Goodness and mercy. Goodness and mercy shall follow me. Shall follow me all the days of my life. All the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord. Forever and ever. Forever and ever. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Someone shout, Amen. Amen. In your house, receive the joy of the Lord. This was open heaven. We are here every Friday for 4 p.m. Be with us next week. We will be here with another message from the Holy Spirit. Call us. Our numbers is behind. If you don't have a church of your own, we are here for you. If you have a Bible teaching church, then go there. Get involved. Serve the Lord with all your heart. This is Pastor Amber Silver. God bless you. I love you all and happy long weekend. Shalom, shalom, and shalom. God bless you. Amen.